Welcome to Conversations with Dr. Stephen Greer, and this is brought to you by the World Puja Network, and we very much appreciate being able to be on the World Puja Network again. Uh, today I'm joined with uh, Dr. Ted Loader, and he is Professor Emeritus at the University of New Hampshire and had worked in the Institute for Earth, Oceans, and Space there for most of his career, and is the science advisor to the Orionproject.org, and today we will be talking about new energy, uh, free energy, and the energy crisis and what all of us can do to heal Gaia, Mother Earth. Uh, my name is Dr. Stephen Greer. I'm a medical doctor and founder of the Orion Project and also the Disclosure Project, and uh, I have dedicated my life over the last few years to finding solutions to the energy and environmental crisis, and also to disclosing information on illegally uh, maintained covert programs that have been uh, keeping a lot of this information from the public. Uh, the, this show is going to be a couple times a month now with conversations with Dr. Stephen Greer, and uh, the next one will be with uh, Linda Willits, and we'll be talking about higher states of consciousness and meditation and how uh, higher states of consciousness can be used to uh, interact with advanced uh, interstellar civilizations who are visiting this planet. But today we want to focus on the orionproject.org and the work it's doing, and uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Ted Loader to the show. Thank you, uh, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here on with you. Well, I think that in terms of introducing this whole matter, uh, I'd like to just say a couple of things about what the Orion Project is. You know, we're in this enormous energy crisis. Everyone who goes to buy any gasoline knows this. And what we have done with the OrionProject.org is to uh, start a nonprofit so that the people can contribute to real energy research. What we find is that there's so much going on that's in the news about alternative energy but no, none of it's going into any solutions. We're spending uh, hundreds of billions of dollars on silliness, such as ethanol and biofuels, which are actually uh, ca causing world food crisis uh, and also cause more pollution than they solve. And we're spending enormous amounts, as of uh, last year, about $100 billion in investments into solar and wind. But everyone recognizes, while those are better than nothing, that's not where the real solutions need to come from. So what we want to focus on at the orionproject.org are the very high-tech, um, physics-oriented electromagnetic systems that are going to give us an entirely new type of energy generation capability. And what, the, what everyone needs to understand is that we have those systems. These have already been developed in classified projects. I've worked with people who've worked in... Uh, uh, naval uh, labs who've worked in Lockheed Skunk Works, who've worked at Northrop and, and other corporations where they have these uh, systems that the taxpayers have paid for, but they have been illegally classified and kept from the public. <laughs> and really what we're talking about are very advanced energy systems that extract energy from the space around us, and there's a lot of ways of doing that. But uh, to make it pretty simple, the public needs to understand that uh, every cubic centimeter of space in the room where you're sitting right now has enough energy to run the Earth for a day if we could extract it. And this is called the zero-point energy field or the quantum vacuum flux field. But there are a lot of other breakthroughs that have happened over the years. Uh, it's not an urban myth that people have actually developed the electronics to uh, get uh, water from uh, uh, turned into a fuel by separating hydrogen and oxygen from the water. Uh, there have been people who've run vehicles on this so-called Brown's gas or hydroxy gas, uh, and there are many other ways to solve the energy problem. The, the, the issue becomes what happens to these inventors and these inventions, and why don't they make their way out to the public? And so what the orionproject.org wants to do is to involve all of us together in an effort to uh, put together the best brain trust, the greatest minds that we can find to research this issue and bring out these solutions that are going to be the real solutions to the energy and environmental crisis. So that's sort of as a way of introduction. And um, I'd like to have, uh, Ted, if you could comment what exactly the orionproject.org is working on right now, what sort of uh, technologies that 
that, that we're focusing on and that you as the science uh, chief, uh, along with Bill Costantino, uh, who's one of our engineers and, and uh, coordinators, uh, have been uh, developing. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, a couple of uh, comments before I uh, dive into that. One of the problems that we've uh, discovered, the Orion Project has discovered in working with uh, various inventors, is the uh, <clears throat> problem, and we've talked about this on the orionproject.org website, is that most of the inventors who've been, uh, or technicians or engineers who've been working in this alternate energy field, if you will, <clears throat> have low budgets. They're sort of doing this out of their own pocket very often. Right. Uh, limited equipment in their own uh, garage or their basement or wherever they're working. Uh, and uh, perhaps even more critical is they have little or no access to other people who can help them solve their problems uh, or solve a certain engineering problem. For example, we're working with an engineer right now who's uh, working on a magnetic motor generator technology uh, with us. And uh, we met with him, and he, uh, he, he mentioned to us that, and we saw his technology, and he said, this is amazing. The guy is an amazing engineer in terms of designing and building and, and having built machining the technology. But he said, when I came to a point where the electronics were, I needed the electronics to uh, add to the mechanical aspect of it, he said to us, he said, I didn't know what to do with this bag of uh, transistors and uh, whatever, electronic parts. And so we said, well, that's fine. We happen to have in our network uh, some people who are exactly what you need, have already worked with this kind of technology, and would be glad to work with you. So we put those two guys together. So one of the, one of the roles uh, that the Orion Project is playing is to bring disparate people together from our very large network of inventors and engineers and physicists and what have you, so that if there's a synergistic uh, effect in terms of uh, building things that no individual can build because, for the most part, these technologies are complex and rely upon <clears throat> various aspects of engineering and physics. Right, and, and so, what's important for people to understand is that this has never happened in the last hundred years in a non-classified project. It's happened through illegally run projects within the aerospace industry and within the contracting industry, and those things have been kept secret. As Ben Rich said to us before, who was head of Lockheed Skunk Works, said before he died, he said, we already have the technologies to travel among the stars faster than the speed of light, but they're locked away in a black box, and it would take an act of God to ever get them out to benefit humanity, to which I said to, 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 that, well, we, the people, need to be the act of God, that God needs to work through us to get these technologies out and to come together and to provide the support, the funding, the logistics, the engineering, the consultants, what have you. And it, it, it's really a huge undertaking because we're trying to do this uh, with very, very little funding. And the Orionproject.org has established a, about a $3 million budget to, to provide nominal funding to these inventors and engineers. And we really need the public to understand that they're going to have to uh, support that in order for this breakthrough to occur because the government isn't going to do it. They've done it already and they've decided to keep it from the people. And these large corporations aren't going to do it because they have these technologies sitting on a black shelf. So what you're saying is exactly right. We have to create this network and pull these folks all together under one roof and provide the support and the funding and the uh, equipment and the fabricating capability and testing facilities and what have you to do this. We know it can be done because, you know, both you and I have seen technologies that uh, are enormously important breakthrough technologies, but trying to get them out to the public is, is a really a big undertaking. And uh, for all the things that are going on in the world uh, where people spend enormous sums of money on silliness, uh, you hear about people throwing parties that cost half a million dollars or a million dollars or somebody in India had a $100 million birthday party or wedding or something, that we need to be able to say, look, can't we come together and support these heroic engineers and scientists like you're talking about who have been struggling for, for so long and who have had real breakthroughs but need further support in order to get something uh, robust enough that you could have your home or car running on it uh, that would be free energy. And the payoff to the society would be so huge the payback, I should say, to the society would be so huge that it's worth this really minimal 
sort of uh, level of support and funding that, that we're looking 